So I've done three in a row. Am I good for the year, Chris? <laughs> Um, I brought her back again. I love having Leslie Osborne. She is our labor commissioner. She was a state legislator. And before that, she was just a woman of all trades and a business. She can do just about anything. And I really enjoy hearing her talk. But more than anything, she is big OSU. She loves coming here. This is God's country. Um, and I enjoy any time I get to see her. And I think you'll enjoy listening to her again and all her updates. And this is Miss Leslie Osborne. Thank you, Glenna. And it's been such a pleasure to get to know Glenna over the years. I think the first time I did was when she came to me with some things that we were working on for county government. And uh, she's great. And it's wonderful to see Dr. Halligan here, who I used to work with. And I love Trish Ransom. So I think I don't, I don't see John Talley here, but y'all have got great representation here in Stilter or Senator Duggar. But I do feel like y'all are really doing well. Yes. Well, is that not how all of you feel? Because I mean, I do. We have a mutual admiration society, but anyway, and it is always fun to get out the bright orange. And after my years here, my kids were fourth generation graduates. I get a smile on my face as soon as I see that still water exit off of, you know, the interstate. So anyway, thanks for having me here. Um, I was in the private sector before I ran for government, and uh, I was a distributor for Ranch Hand Grill Guards, if anyone knows what that is. So for 25 years, I sold heavy-duty truck parts after getting my business degree here and was recruited by Senator Ron Justice to run for the House. And I said, you know, I've never given a speech. I've never been political. I just, I don't think that that's who you need. And I was 45 at the time. And he said, well, that's exactly what we need because we've got too many guys. And I do see one here in skinny suits. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a good skinny suit, but it, you know, it, it, it was, it's very lovely. But he said, well, we have too many 21 year olds in skinny suits with poli sci degrees that don't know how it really works. And we actually need people that have been in the spokes of the wheel, even one or two in their skinny suits. But we need people that have been out there, nurses, doctors, teachers, uh, OSU presidents and ladies that sold truck parts. Uh, we need people that actually understand how Oklahoma works and what we need. So the 10 years in the legislature were very interesting. Um, I was later named appropriations chair in my last two years there in the year that we had the worst budget crisis in state history, which was, I'm not known for my timing. It was a very difficult job to do at that time. And uh, I always want to say before I get into this that we need to remember that Oklahoma is a very red state and it takes a lot of pride in low taxes. Last year, the legislature cut taxes again after we had worked so hard to raise them a bit. So I believe in the next indicators, one of the best uh, groups that will do nonpartisan rankings is Wallet Hub. And I believe when all of this is enacted, we'll be back to 48th or 49th in the nation in overall tax collections. Uh, and you can't just look at income, you just can't look at sales, you just can't look at property, you have to amalgamate those and look at it as a percentage of the average person's uh, income. So when you look that we're 48th or 49th in the nation, and then you hear that we need help with schools, that we need help with rural health care, that we need help with the mental health care access, we don't get to complain. When we have potholes and we have, you know, when we're electing people that think it's more important to run things that they can put on their resume for the next office they run for, like low taxes, 122 abortion bills and 85 gun bills, uh, because they think that's what will get them a spot on Fox News. Dr. Halligan's laughing because he knows that we think a lot alike on these things. A lot of them have forgotten why we're there. So I just want to give a quick shout out that the legislature has one job in Oklahoma. Constitutionally, they're required to pass a balanced budget by the last day of session, which is the last Friday in May, a Latin term is sine die. In that budget, they are supposed to correctly fund the core services of government. That's the fabric that makes Oklahoma work, that makes anywhere work. So what is that fabric? It's making sure that we have a system of infrastructure. 
safe roads and bridges for us to travel on, as well as the movement of goods and services. That means a quality public education in all 77 counties for every child, where we're doing our best to change the trajectory of children's future. That means good mental health care services. Nobody wanted to talk about that until the last 10 or 15 years, but it's real. And I promise you that everyone in this room has a family member or a friend that has been affected. And we have very little of that network and rural health care access. It's very hard. We've lost 12 medical major, major medical systems in the state in the last decade because we didn't accept Medicaid expansion when it was offered at first. We do believe there'll be a change coming with the state ballot question, not to get political, but it's going to pump about a billion dollars into that a year. That being said, if you want to change your trajectory and not continue to be 45th to 50th in every indicator that matters, you need to invest in yourselves. Anyone in this room that has a house knows that if you have a hole in your roof, you fix it, it's called stewardship. You know if you've had a business that if you don't ever invest in it and you try to do everything at rock bottom prices forever, you're probably not going to flourish. And at some point, my daughter, who is a beautiful 30 year old, just left the state with her Oklahoma State degree because she was a school counselor in Yukon, Oklahoma. She made very low wages with that as a mental health counselor, three degrees, and her frustration last year was during the pandemic that she was having an average in her fourth to sixth grade school, a wealthy school district of at least one child per week trying to commit suicide. Nobody would believe those numbers. Nobody would believe that's real, but it is. Now, when she would do digging, it was usually because there was dysfunction at home. A lot of that was COVID related. It was job related. It was mental stress, but that comes on the child. It took her an average of four is, is to six true? months yeah. to get somebody from DHS to respond for each child. But the legislature cut taxes. $280 million a year last year because they said there was nothing else we needed to fund. Now, you're saying, is she really a Republican? Yes. <laughs> I believe you can be a Republican that believes in investment. And when I'm talking about having a better funded Oklahoma, it doesn't mean you want to be first. It means if we could wave a magic wand and get to 40th, we'd be in nirvana. I promise Trish and I could sit down and find a lot of things that would change the trajectory of our state if we really want to be a top 10 state and not just use it as a moniker. So that being said, what does the Department of Labor do? I had run several bills for former Commissioner Costello and was recruited to run by Melissa Houston that took his place after he passed away in that uh, they wanted someone that actually knew what the agency did. So I'd started a new division there when I was a legislator for the compressed natural gas industry, gotten to know. Nobody really knows what the Labor Department does. I've spoken to y'all before and some of you were here, but just a quick recap, we're the safety agency for the state, safe workplaces and safety of citizens. So safety of citizens, we inspect every amusement park ride in the, in the state at least once a year. From Whitewater to every time a little carnival chain may set up from the Garfield County Fair to the Payne County Fair to the state fairs. 31 states do that. It's an extra set of eyes on that. And because of that, we have a much lower rate of anybody, especially our children and grandchildren, ever being affected or injured on a ride. Of course, it can happen. There's operator error and those kind of things. But we're making sure once those rides are unloaded that every screw is going in the right place and that they're doing them mechanically properly. Uh, we check every commercial grade hot water heater and boiler in the state. We do that because about 20 years ago, there was a horrible accident at Star Spencer Schools. If anyone remembers, people died, children and students, because a boiler exploded. Everybody looked around and said, well, what agency is supposed to be checking that? And that's where we've kind of become that safety agency. We check every public access elevator and escalator once a year in the state. We make sure on any uh, asbestos abatement that they come through us and use somebody who's actually certified through the APA and knows what they do. There's a lot of things like that that most people just wouldn't think about. The compressed natural gas vehicles. Um, when I ran that bill, it was because at that time, the price differential, a lot of people were converting their vehicles to CNG because of the price of gas. And at that time, there was no criteria. So you could get on Craigslist and find a guy in 
Para that says, come over on Sunday, I'll stick a, a, you know, a kit in the back of your truck. Guys, that's a missile. And uh, so the compressed natural gas industry actually asked us to regulate them. Now, that rarely happens, but they realized that they needed to keep the bad actors out to keep the integrity of the, the industry. One person rear-ended with an improperly uh, put in missile back there, as I would say, and the family dies, nobody ever converts their vehicle again. So now you're required to have at least a two-week course at Career Tech, and you have to use an EPA certified kit. It was amazing. Any accidents, everything went down through the basement. Every industry that we regulate, we have meetings at least twice a year with industry to get their input because we don't ever want to be that overreaching agency. We want to be there to actually work with industry. One of my favorite things we do is what we call our OSHA consultation services. And I brought some of these with me. If you know of any small business, which is under 500 people in Oklahoma, what we will do is go out and draw a safety plan to make sure you're keeping your employees safe. Not every state does this. It's a federal grant we take advantage of, but it's, it's very advantageous for several reasons. So if you're Boeing Aerospace, you can afford a fleet of safety consultants. If you're a small burgeoning manufacturer that started in the barn out on the farm and now you're up to 22 employees, you may not have been thinking about everything you need to do for safety. So what we will do is if you've heard of OSHA, first of all, that's not us, that's the feds. They have the ability to stop in any business in the United States any day and drop in a spot check to make sure you're keeping your employees safe. That's a good thing, but they can be rather onerous. They can shut you down. They start with $12,000 fines. It's very difficult for businesses that were not prepared for them coming. What we will do is we have OSHA trained employees to their standards. And so if a business invites us in, we would go out and if they decide to work with us, we will train their employees, make sure the workplace is safe. If there's caustic materials, you have proper ventilation, you have good exit signs, heavy duty equipment, you have the guards and, uh, and all the you know, things roped off in the lanes. Because of that, you can get a tax credit every year on your taxes. And number two, you're going to have lower workers' compensation rates. Number three, the best part of all, you're going to keep a healthy and safe workforce. So it's just something that's a great program. And most people don't realize that we offer for free. It's totally confidential. So if we do go out to one and see some things that are a little scary, but they decide not to work with us, we do not report to the feds. We have no shared databases, but what we want people to realize is we're not there to be a narc to whoever, we're there to help. We also are one of seven states that do it for the public sector. So we'll come out to any county, city, or school and do the same thing, churches, the same thing. So same way, if you're a bigger city, you're going to be able, your municipal department will have a safety consultant. If you're like the little city of Mangum where somebody died last year in an electrical accident, you're hiring a lot of people at minimum wage and they're not really trained to do trenching or electrical work. So we will come out and make sure that you're doing that properly. Great program. One of my other favorite programs is that we make sure wages are paid. So if anybody works for an Oklahoma business and does not receive the wages they worked for, we will litigate for free. We have uh, courtrooms in Oklahoma City and Tulsa, administrative law judges that will come in. If you are in a more lucrative position, you would probably lawyer up and go to district court. Not everyone can afford to do that. So a lot of times what we'll see is when an industry is not doing well and a business unexpectedly closes. So we'll see a huge rush when oil and gas is in trouble you know, like a, a drilling manufacturer, whatever, they come in on Friday and it's like, okay, I'll see you Monday. And it's like, oh, you know, we're gonna have to let everybody go. We just can't keep the doors open, the checks in the mail, doesn't always come. So what we will do is uh, for no cost to any citizen in Oklahoma, make sure you get those back wages. Last year, we brought in about a million dollars, but it was at an average of $850 a claim. So for the actual demographic we're helping, that's huge because that's the difference in not having your car repossessed or being evicted from your apartment, which means it's harder to get the next job. And then you can start that vicious cycle of homelessness, can't drive to the next job, get on social programs, and all of a sudden you fall into a crack that's almost impossible to get out of. So if you all know of anybody that would, would uh, be able to utilize any of our services, please let them know because these are free services and we really do pride ourselves on trying to do as much outreach as we can. 
one of the other things that we've started working with is the Potts Family Foundation, a great nonprofit that works on a program called Oklahoma Family Positive Workplaces. So if you have any type of business, it can be, we did it at the Department of Labor, and you really try to go above and beyond to be helpful to your employees because, you know, the old thing, happy wife, happy life. It's the same way with happy employees, good morale, making sure they're paid well, making sure whatever, but there's a lot of times that things fall through the cracks for your employees as well. I know that we at the Department of Labor over the last year, when we've seen a lot of trends of people not being able to keep workforce, uh, the ones that seem to be affected the most, we only have 80 employees, but we're young mothers because they were constantly getting called back. Their children had to have a tablet at home and they had to work from home because of quarantines and COVID. And there's, it's a hard time to find quality daycare. And it was very difficult in particular for that demographic. Well, with something like family positive workplaces, what we're encouraging is that those workplaces and with this partnership would actually help those employees with trying to locate those services. Or if you had an autistic child and your insurance doesn't pay, are there any nonprofits in your area that might help with therapies or help with different things? Just things to help because if you're keeping people happy, in any way that you can, it's helping you as a workforce. And so, you know, we just try to send out monthly bulletins with services available and those kind of things. So anybody from a small insurance agency to a large business, if you would be interested in applying for something like this, I think it's very advantageous to you because of your, the health, mental and physical of your employees. So I have these brochures, brochures here too. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about workforce because we get a lot of calls about that. You know, there is a critical shortage in Oklahoma, first of all, in the trades. The average age of a plumber is 59. If you don't know, that's a problem. <laughs> that means at some point when the baby boomers are retiring, we're going to have a very hard time, particularly in our 75 rural counties, of filling some of those positions. This also goes the same for electricians, construction, all these types of things. When we look back and try to figure out how we got to these shortages, what we're seeing a lot is that probably stopped around the time they stopped shop classes. So if you remember back, people like my age and Glenna's age, I'm a bit older, uh, when we were in school and people had shop classes, if there were those kids that weren't necessarily college track, they sometimes found something they were good at, be it welding, be it per, per, uh, construction, uh, the different things that would have come from that. Now, when they're not being called into that, not having a class with that, it's not necessarily a viable alternative. I'm a huge proponent of our uh, career tech system. It's one of the best in the nation. And, you know, I'm very hard that we are to traditionally tend to be 45th to 50th in almost every indicator that matters. We do fantastic with career tech. One of the reasons we do is because at statehood, they decided that they would receive a percentage of ad valorem and not be totally reliant on the legislature to receive their dollars. It makes it much more difficult when you're like a public school and you're reliant on that. So Marcy Mack also does a fabulous job and uh, we are partnering with her to try to get to more of the people that help kids make these decisions. So one is ag teachers. You know, my kids were graduates of Amber Pocasset, if anyone's ever heard of that. Little school down past Tuttle, 33 and 35 in their class. Both of them were um, president of the FFA chapter, but I look at those kids they worked with. What a great work ethic. These are the kids that got it up all through high school at six o'clock, winter, summer, rain, whatever, like a mailman, and but not Newman, if you watch Seinfeld. And But they got up at six and fed their stock show animals before they went to work. They learned that work ethic. But a lot of times, particularly somewhere like that in these little rural communities, there's not a farm to come home to. It will not support more than one family. And of course, we're here in Stillwater, and I was what I would call a higher ed snob. If my kids had come to me and said, I want to go to career tech. I just said, oh, no, you're not. You're going to Oklahoma State University. You know, that's what we do. Now that I have been more uh, educated, uh, Doug Major and I, if y'all know him, I'm already in career tech. We're the same age and we're friends in college. And uh, what a fantastic program. We do need to realize that not every kid needs a four-year degree. And scary, Dr. Halligan, don't get mad at me. 
but there is a huge market of kids that are not going to do that, that we're not reaching. High school counselors are overworked. Uh, all the state testing, the unfunded mandates we put on schools all the time, they don't have time to be that true career counselor we used to see. Mom and dad may not even be aware of some of these opportunities that are out there. So that's where with Marcy, we're going to work with every spring and every fall. So every spring, we're going to work with high school counselors and English teachers. And every fall, we're going to work with ag teachers trying to really promote the trades in two ways with what career tech teaches, where, for instance, only two career techs in the state have a plumbing program, Metro Tech and Middale. But there's also a lot of union and non-union houses that have fantastic apprenticeships. Now, unfortunately, most of them are in the Oklahoma City and Tulsa area, but we've got to get that information out because most of these kids would know some family member they could stay with as they transition. Three years of night class, no student debt, working as a journeyman during the day, say as an electrician, three years you get out and you can be entrepreneurial. You start at 50, 60,000 a year. We've got to push that because it's a critical need for us to keep moving the state forward. And uh, I hear a lot of people, and I see it on Facebook, one of my least favorite things, social media, that say, well, you know, everybody's just laying on their, sorry, ass and taking a government check. Well, we're at 3%. That's almost full unemployment. So let's figure out how did we get here, right? I mean, this is a problem, especially, and I've talked about the critical, but what about the service industry? Everywhere you go, a Wendy's, whatever, you see the signs, we need help. So where did these people go? And I'm here to tell you that I don't think it's that they're all just laying at home, getting an unemployment check when we're at 3%. I think it's a couple of things. I think number one, it's a lot to do with what I talked about with childcare and it's the younger mothers. And I think what it did on our staff, what we noticed a lot of them did a reevaluation. When I really think about what I make versus what I'm paying for daycare, gas to get here, clothes to where to work. I'm not making anything anyway. I'll just wait a few years till my kids are in school. So we're going to have to think about more daycare. So we, you know, we're hearing a lot about if you're a larger company, would it be possible you would consider on-site daycare? You know, you'll see a medical system do that or a Boeing do that or something. Or do we need to look at a bit more of subsidizing of daycare, quality daycare for kids? Because it is a problem. It's real. Number two, a lot, something that seems nobody's really correlating is the medical marijuana industry. Three years ago, it was not here. They employ literally hundreds of thousands of people. Where did they come from? I'm here to tell you they came from the service industry where they were making two to $7 a year, uh, an hour. And now they're starting at 14 to 20 in dispensaries, grow houses, and places where they do the, uh, the processing in between. Those people came from somewhere. Uh, number three, we have lost 10,000 people. One out of four, every 400 people is dead in Oklahoma because of COVID. I'm a Republican that believes in medical science and Dr. Fauci, and I'm telling you COVID is real. I've been to a funeral for a 35-year-old and a 38-year-old that were both anti-vaxxers, both had two young children they will not raise. I'm sorry if I've offended some anti-vaxxer in the room, it's real. And a few of those people were working in the workplace as well. So when you add all of those things, how do we get people for these jobs? I think we're going to see more automation. You know, remember when we first started seeing the self-checkout lines at Walmart and everybody was whatever, you know, but that's probably what we're going to do. There is a limited amount of people. And if we don't find ways to get, for instance, those younger mothers back in, and I would dare say as well, uh, that some people took the COVID time to better, uh, educate themselves, maybe finished an associate's degree, maybe went to career tech for HVAC, whatever it was. But the world has changed on those kind of things and we're going to have to change with it and realize what it is. The last thing, and I did ask Glenna and I did talk about it last time, but I end every speech with a call for civility. Guys, we're in an ugly place, ugly place. Because when I got into this 13 years ago, on all of my brochures, it said, I'm going to run as a bipartisan legislature, legislator. At that time, we still had a state Senate that was controlled by the Democrats. We had a Republican House. And at that time, it was still thought to be a good thing, a nice thing to work across the aisle for good solutions for Oklahoma. Now, 
you're supposed to hate the other side. I don't hate Trish Ranson, even though she left early. <laughs> she told me she was going to in advance that it would not be my speech content. Um, at the end of the day, when we look at what the job of the legislature is and the governor and all of us, it's to have a successful Oklahoma, a thriving Oklahoma. The daughter that I talked about that was so extremely frustrated about not being able to get help for her kids took a job in Colorado Springs making $20,000 more a year where they'll probably be able to quickly support children with those problems because she felt it so utterly frustrating. I don't want you all to lose your kids or grandkids to another state because the opportunities aren't here. So what do we need to do? We need to say it is okay to work with the other side. It's okay to listen to, respect, and talk to people that don't look like you, think like you, or love like you. And at the end of the day, until we remember that the legislature is not there to save our souls, that's the job of the pulpit and the homes. America was founded on the separation of church and state, but we're taking about 70% of our time in state and federal politics trying to save your soul. We need to get back out of that business and get back into what we're supposed to be there for. Doesn't mean you can't advocate for those things. Doesn't mean you can't teach your family. The second thing is if we're not teaching our children and grandchildren critical thinking skills, no one else will. So when my daughter, when she was younger, would come to me with some source she had pulled up on Google, say if it had been about COVID. And it's like, well, mom, you know, I have a question, you know, they're saying that maybe the shot would make me infertile. And I've got a really good article here from the National Institute of Health, but Jimmy at the Jiffy Lube told me to look at this website from mychinabasement.com. We're laughing about that. How many people in the room know somebody that listens to Jimmy at the Jiffy Lube instead of an expert? When I need my oil changed, I'm headed to Jimmy. If I have cancer, I'm going to see an oncologist. If we aren't teaching our children to be critical thinkers, it will not occur. We can't rely on the school system to do it. We can't rely on them to just have the innate knowledge to do it like they're learning, like they learn to swallow and blink. It has to be taught. And if we're not teaching them that, shame on us. Number two, or number three, I want to be like Rick Perry, remember? when he was like in that deal and he got up there and he couldn't remember the third thing, never say your numbers. And if you're a preacher, if you're a preacher, never say I've got 17 points. Cause at 1130, everybody's going, he's on number 11 and I have a pot roast in the oven. I mean, you instantly are thinking about it, but social media guys, we have all seen known or become ourselves keyboard warriors. We are ugly. We are nasty, we are divisive, and I'm telling you that not every Democrat wants to abort every baby at nine months, and not every Republican wants to arm that baby as, as soon as it hits air with an AK-47. <laughs> at the end of the day, there's 70 or 80% of the middle of us that really just want a better Oklahoma, a safe place to live, a place where we can flourish, where business can flourish, and a place where our children can do even better than we did. I have two children, and between them, they have four degrees. I only have one. I'm more of the George W. Bush type, uh, you know, student. But that being said, I take more pride to this day when I hear that Will or Katie has actually done something kind or empathetic than I hear about the next job. I want to know that I raised good people. And all of us need to take a step back at what we're talking about, what we're sharing, what we're listening to, that we haven't become that. So anyway, thank you for letting me be here. If you know of anybody interested in our programs, love to have it. Glenna has my cell number. I'm sure she'd be happy to sell to uh, share it, not sell it. <laughs> Whoa, I've got an election next year and that was scary. Okay, there will be no selling of the phone number, but that being said, uh, I also would ask, does anyone have any questions?
so, you know, that's a rather divisive issue. And I'm going to repeat it because we said that this would be is what about the Afghan refugees or any other, if there were any Haitian refugees or anyone that comes here, you know, those are primarily done in Oklahoma through the Catholic charities. Uh, my understanding is the Catholic charities is working with groups to try to find in particular, a lot of these people will be more of those low income type jobs that are not particularly trained for any certain field. I think that we absolutely need to look at that as a possibility. I know that they are uh, settling them in different areas, but there's several groups that will work like that with Goodwill Industries to others. And my understanding is they will. Now that's 1800 people. We've got a lot bigger problem than not every one of them would be of working age. And our hope would be that they would also better themselves and, and, and do their immigration. If you are not of Native American descent, you are an immigrant. That's what I like to say is I have a real problem that we're not working well with the tribes right now. Guys, I have no Native American blood. Thank you to the tribes for what they've done to be our partners in the state. They are an equally sovereign nation. And so anyway, back to your question, I do believe that uh, that is a partial answer and we should be, uh, we should be gracious and helpful to those that are coming here because they wouldn't be the families that are coming here if they had not been helpful to our troops. Anyone else? First of all, I love your accent. This is my first Oklahoma accent. And many years ago, I was working with Governor Fallon as part of her cabinet. I was the Secretary of Science, Science Teacher Committee. And uh, we were trying to persuade a high tech company to come to Oklahoma. We invited the CEO and his executive offices. And we met with the governor and with other secretaries. And we were sat around the table. And one of the points we made was that we had among the lowest tax burden here in Oklahoma in the country. The CEO was not impressed. He first he said, the first question I ask when I hear that is what is not funded? Uh, are you not funding education? Are you not funding healthcare? Are you not funding social services? And we have to pivot very quickly and start the log about investment in education, investment in this. But it was a big one. It was very clear that we were cutting those services because we were cutting tax. Well, needless to say, they didn't come. And they didn't come because it was obvious that you cannot cut your way to grow. And Oklahoma was not growing because we were not investing. So first of all, I like your accent. Second of all, I love your comments because they're real. When we did not accept Medicaid expansion and lost 12 major medical systems, if you think that didn't matter to keeping businesses and bringing in businesses, it did. I chaired a workforce uh, group at Commerce the last three years trying to bring rural Oklahoma auto parts manufacturers. The reason is those are primarily in the South. They're in the Alabama, South Carolina type area, and they have no more people they can find. We have a great uh, road and rail as far as infrastructure and placement. We have a great career tech that will work on training people. They would not come for one reason because we did not have quick and easy access to an emergency room because most of them have heavy duty manufacturing equipment and require less than 15 minutes to get to an emergency room in case somebody lops off an arm or something. Same way, if you will know right now where Texas has basically overturned Roe v. Wade, I'm not gonna get into a pro-choice or pro-life argument. But we are seeing groups there, businesses saying, I'm sorry, I'm here. Sometimes, and there's Salesforce, Tesla, some of them are offering to let people move to another location, whatever it is, if they're offended, there's going to be backlash. At the end of the day, our moralistic decisions at the Capitol, as well as our decisions to keep us the lowest tax state in the nation, bite us in the butt. And if we really ever want to get out of the bottom five, we have to have realistic conversations about that. And like I say again, this is not 
talking about getting us to first in the nation on taxes. We are 48th or ninth. I'm saying get us to 45th. Don't give my agency another dime. We are lean and mean, but give it to the ones that change the trajectory of our children. Mental health care services, good regional colleges, good higher ed colleges, good public education, good health care access. Those things change the world. So I love that. And I'd love to visit with you after the meeting. And we probably I don't know that we have time for any more questions, do we? OK, thank you. Thank you so much, Leslie, for joining us. So glad that we gave you an opportunity to visit Stillwater and wear orange. Um, Stillwater